Riveting Radio Real Estate. It's Don Pinnell. And good morning, Don. Good morning, Jeff. How you doing? I'm feeling riveting. <laughs> well, good. Yes, that, that works is, out well. That's going to work out well for all of us, I think, involved. <laughs> yes. Going to start a new series here with us this week. Yes, I thought what I would do, it's kind of spring cleaning time. So I thought I would go through a little bit today. I have a really neat booklet uh, that comes from American Home Shield, which is a um, home uh, warranty company that we use every once in a while. And it talks about all the different systems in your house that you can look for and what to check and what to kind of be aware of as as you're going through. And then I thought what we could do is... uh, Home inspections are always a big part of any sale. Oh, yeah. And so uh, next time I thought we could go through uh, an actual inspection report and we could kind of talk about what the inspectors look for. And then I thought after that we could have an actual inspector come in and talk about what they look for when they're going through a house. I mean, it's a it's a pretty in-detail process. Yeah. And then after that we could talk about what the buyer's response is likely to be to that report and what they tell the seller. Um, Because as I said, it's a big part of any sale. Yeah, they're Um, putting a lot of faith in that person to accurately tell you what they think is going on. They are, yeah, yeah. And uh, we were just talking earlier that that it might not be a bad idea for sellers when they get ready to sell to know what an inspector is likely to look at so they could kind of be a little proactive about what to do with their house so that it makes it look better. I mean, we've been in the house now four years. Uh, We'll say again, full disclosure, that uh, Christy at John L. Scott was my realtor about the house there. So whatever. Yeah. Just want to make sure people are aware that there's no conflicts. But You know, it's been about four years, five years that we've had the house, and I've thought about doing it just to kind of make sure I'm keeping up with my own maintenance. Right. Not that we're looking to sell, but better better now than to get it out of out of control right exactly and that's kind of what this little booklet talks about what so, are some of these ones so the first one that it talks about is the heating system that's okay. obviously a big important one around here yeah um there there is a section on air conditioning but we don't use that very much so right. I, I skipped that part <laughs> so on the heating system uh, they are recommending routine maintenance um check the filters once a month Smell around the appliance for gas odors if it's a if it's a gas furnace. Okay. Visually inspect exhaust vent for rust damage and deterioration. Inspect the fan belt for cracking or fraying. At first, I suppose oh, you would wow. need to know where the fan belt yeah, is. Yeah, that would be a good one. <laughs> yeah, and then check the belt's tension by pushing on the center uh, of it to just make sure it's good and tight, kind of like you do on a car. Yeah. Um, have an, have annual maintenance service performed um, once a year, and that is a really important one. Um, a lot of places will set you up on an actual yearly schedule and they'll just that way you don't have to think about it they'll come out once a year and most of the time i've seen when inspectors look at this they're looking for that sticker on the furnace that says that it's been business serviced yeah and so try and do that once a year and then it, this is a funny one that says become familiar with normal operating sounds so okay listen to your furnace when it's running and kind of register what it sounds like so that way you'll know if it starts making a funny noise huh. you'll you'll recognize that so um it's a good one yeah yeah and then they go through a little thing about some quick fixes if there's no heat check the obviously check the fuses um if it's if there's soot in the house to to check the filter um the blow, blower makes unusual noises you can tighten the set screws and hmm. but a lot of that is stuff that that would be caught in a in a yearly maintenance when yeah. he goes through. I, we have that done at our house uh, once a year, and it's kind of fun to watch the guy go through. And he's there pretty thorough. They check, I mean, they have, they crank the heat up and make sure that the the things come on and go off when they're supposed to. So, And then they clean the filters and do all that kind of stuff. So I would highly recommend that yearly yeah. yearly maintenance. Again, it's something that, that inspectors look for. Mm-hmm. So the next one is electrical systems, and this one always scares me. I'm, electricity is sure. the thing that I figure you need to know what you're doing before you yeah. start messing with that. But they do say to make sure that there's never too many appliances plugged into one circuit to help prevent yeah. uh, circuit breaker trips. I've had that happen before. I, I think I had that and yesterday. You to, and did you? Yeah. And then you have to know where the circuit breaker is, and uh-huh. you have to know which way is off and which way is on. You know that kind of stuff. And then they say regularly use the self-test button on on your GFCI. 
um, yeah. outlet. And those are, for those people who don't know, those, that stands for ground fault circuit interrupter. And that is the little thing with the red button on it, usually, that is around anywhere there, where there's water or outside. And that is set up so that if it does come in contact with water, it instead of uh, electrocuting people, mm -hmm. it automatically it shuts, shuts off. off the circuit. That can be a problem. I had it happen one time. Uh, there was one in our garage that we didn't know we had, and we couldn't figure out why there was no power in the garage. And we, we actually finally even called an electrician because we couldn't figure out. And he came and, and he uh, took about two seconds and located the ground fault thing and hit the hit the button, and lo and behold, and that, we had power that's again. That's what it was. And then he charged us to stupidity fee. Yeah, <laughs> that'll, happen. There. that'll so happen. So know where all of those are in your house. Um, there should be one one per circuit, um, and it should be around, around your kitchen sink, around your bathroom sink. And that is also something that inspectors look for if huh. they are not there. They have have you put them in. One time we had one of a similar situation. I don't, I don't think we got to the point of calling somebody, but we were trying to figure out why there was no power, right. and it and it happened to be on like the front side of the garage, and if you go on the electrical box and you do you read what they had written, right. it didn't quite line up with the circuit that it should have been on. Right, So you're, right. you're just kind of like, That's oh. the way ours was, too. Yeah, yeah. So then there's there's the circuit breaker itself mm -hmm. that you can look for. Then there's the ground fault, mm -hmm. GFCI. And then there's also something that's relatively new called an arc fault circuit interrupter. Don't see those as often, but they are a type of circuit breaker that breaks the circuit when it detects dangerous electrical an electrical arc between okay. between so it's not a bad thing to look into if, yeah you know especially in older homes it, it might not be a bad thing to, to stick in there that's something that an electrician can do for you okay so um plumbing yeah the next one okay. that's a big one um some of the things that they say for routine maintenance there are toilet paper should be the only paper product flushed down the toilet I've seen a septic tank one time where they flushed down uh, baby wipes, and it was awful. Oh, yeah. It was really disgusting. Like so, that. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, toilet paper only. Uh, maintain water softener according to the manufacturer's directions, if you have one of those. Water filters and ice maker filters should be changed according to manufacturer's recommendations. So if you have a an ice maker in your refrigerator, make sure that you keep up with the maintenance on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that can that can be a health thing sometimes. It can There can be germs in there that that are pretty disgusting. So you want to check that regularly. Um, I got drain. a lot of work to do when yeah, I Yeah, right, home. right, right. Uh, this one is interesting. <laughs> drain the water heater tank to remove sediment according to manufacturer's recommendations. I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think I've ever done that either. But it might not be a bad thing to check. There's that little... Um, you know, valve at the bottom, yeah. and you can kind of check and see what's coming out of that. Usually, you could put a hose in there, yeah. so it's not just going to spill yeah, right, out right, right, the garage right. on right. the floor. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, and and That's check and see if there's idea. a bunch of sediment. If there is, then you might want to think about emptying it. Because there's and, not a water filter probably on that. I mean, no. you're filtering out your tap or your drinking water. Right, right. But so not into obviously. not into the hot water heater. Yeah. I had a plumber one time too yell at me for, for not dusting off the top of my water heater. I, I never had done that, but he said that's important to do. I bet so, it is. Yeah, yeah. There's so, electricity and, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah. So and then it says treat drains once a month to prevent clogs. Whether it seems like they need it or not, you want to be a little careful with that if you are on a septic system, uh -huh. because a lot of the the products that they use for for uh, clearing drains are not real good for your septic system. So check on that. Um, they had a quick fix here that I thought was interesting to clear a clogged drain without using that, that stuff. They say pour half a cup of salt down the drain followed by boiling water. I'd never heard that before. Well, so I thought, it. well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they also mentioned that it's important to know where the shutoff valves are for yeah. all of your for your toilets and your sinks and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. So are, that's important. Do most new houses, our house is, uh, has got it in one central spot upstairs in our closet where right. all... And it's all uh, tube fed right. out and about. Is that kind of how? Pex pipes. That's what they're. Do that's what they're using more and more now. Yeah. Um, older houses, of course, are going to have the individual shutoffs, but yeah, those those ones where it's all in one location are really handy. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I was. I mean, I was downstairs, um, and I had to shut the water off on the sink or the toilet or something, and there weren't the right. things, so I had to go run upstairs. Right. Right. Well, yeah. In that case, then yeah, yeah it's a little bit more. I mean, it, it is good to know that it's they're all right there. Right. Right. So again, good to know where those are. Yeah. Um, and then it goes in and talks about all the different like the range in the oven so how are we doing on time oh, we got a, well, okay. a couple minutes okay. here don't worry the, about that the one on the range in the oven it says to uh, if you have a self cleaning oven don't use any other method to clean it so don't use spray cleaners if it, if you have a self cleaning one mm -hmm. um, clean mis mineral deposits on the electric heating elements with vinegar 
and clean or change the range hood exhaust filters regularly. And they're say, they're recommending every three to six months. Jeez. Take a look at those. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then they talk a little bit about if you have a gas range, if you have a, a burner that won't light, to take a look at whether, make sure that the, the little holes around the, the, the thing are clear. That's something I have to do online yeah. because I have one that doesn't light right now. So, and then... Uh, they have a, a lot of times they'll come and check the um, those burners and make sure that the pilot light stays on mm-hmm. when you when you turn it down to low. When they want to make sure that the, the the flame stays on. Yeah. And if it does go out, that it you can relight it. So that's and that's a health and safety sure. issue too. So that's pretty important. Um, on a, an electric range, they want to make sure, and I've seen the, a lot of them call this out. There should be an anti-tip device that's where it's connected to the to the floor or the wall in the back uh-huh. so yeah. that when you have the oven door open it doesn't tip forward okay. and spill things off so yeah. that's a that's a safety thing huh. most newer ones have that but some older ones don't do you have these books at your office can people come and get them or? i can certainly get them i was thinking i would get a, a supply I, this is the only one i have but i know that i can get them from american home shield so okay. i'm thinking i might order a, a bunch well how can people get in touch with you john We're they, running, we are running out of time they here. can call me at 490-4493 or come and see me at the corner of third and railroad uh be happy to to talk with you about any of this stuff and again next week we'll talk about i'll bring over an actual inspection report okay. and we'll kind of go through it and let you, let folks know what inspectors look at. Oh, wonderful. That'll okay. be great. great. Well, that'll be two weeks from now for the next Riveting Radio Real Estate with Don Pinnell. Thank you much. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too.